All right. All right. We are here. We are here and we are live. I got this thing. Oh, is it an ancient artifact that helps to unlock, you know, secret uh, chambers into portals and dimensions? Or is it just a decorative accent that Heidi got for me and she picked up for me? There's people. There's people. Usually it's always like the first like 15 or so seconds. Yeah, Joe, I did. I already plugged it in. Thank you. So, yes. Hi, hello. Sunday chucking. I know, right? I know, it's so fancy. I know, oh my gosh, made the stream. Let's chuck. Hey, oh. Of course you stream my first day back at work. Katie, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, send me your work schedule. We'll work something out. Uh, Versena Ryu, what's up? Derek, what's up, Karina? Empty vid, yo. Yo, hello, Abigail. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. We chucking. Oh snap! Ah, just uh, had to put our kittens down. Oh my gosh, Lauren Tonkin. I'm really sorry to hear about that. That's really such a I know reasonable time, right? That's the other thing. It's so it's so yeah. I know I'm getting more decorative. I'm trying to I'm trying to go like real kind of YouTube, you know. Uh, yep, happy Sunday. I mean, you can't have, that's the thing. You can't have a Chuck stream without, I mean, that we got it. We, I missed it. I missed it. Lauren, thank you. Oh my gosh, appreciate it. Ow, I just hit my knuckles a couple of times. That, you have to name all the big cats. Hold on, hold on. We're talking about, we're chucking. We got to chuck first. Ah, that did actually... There we go. There we go. Bringing out the chucks early. I am. I am. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not peeking just yet. It's just, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. I know, yeah. My wall scarf, Green Bay Packers, go pack go. Go pack go. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Uh, how's Munch? He's doing good. Munchie's doing good. Um, and, uh, it's been a little bit, um, since I've seen him, didn't see him since last weekend. Haven't seen Munchie since last weekend. I know, that's the whole thing. The only reason I whack myself with the, with the chucks is because I'm, I'm a little rusty. Just watching that I knocked out three teeth, twisted an ankle, broke a lamp, and scared a dog. I don't have a dog. Oh, just watching that. Okay, I'm like, I... <laughs> Jelly Bean, I was reading that and I'm just like, did you actually really just do that? What were you doing? And I realized that you were saying that about me. Bear down. Ah, boo. Boo. Gross. Get out of here. I'm, I should block you. I should block you, Andrew, Andrew, for saying that garbage. For saying that garbage. Start a, we should start a pool. And how long the new decor is going to last against the chucks. No, 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 no. Okay, so here, here's the thing. The only things that I'm going to hit with the chucks is myself. Okay, I'm not going to hit my decor. I'm not going to mess up my security deposit. Psh. Yes, Whitney, I should blick him. He deserves a good blicking. Oh, that's right. Jan, working on the potatoes. Jan's been working on actual hand crocheted uh, Slato potato holders where they're little tiger knitted tigers that you can put a potato inside in case you have a need to have individually um, warmed potatoes in wool. It's little potatoes. Go back, go. You inspired me to grow a Corona stash, but I also look a lot creepier. Yeah, that is true. Your security deposit was gone when you moved in. Actually, no. They... <laughs> I'm not going to sit there and say that I, I moved into a particularly, uh, it's, it's fine. It's a, it's a nice enough place, but it's certainly not, you know, it's not, uh, the, the, the highest echelon, I guess. And they basically said just like, oh yeah, you can, you know, you can punch holes in the wall and dry spackle and stuff like that. Trust me, these things, 
These buildings have taken a beating over the last few decades. So, yeah, we want you to, they use the words like, we want you to feel like, you know, at home. We want you to feel like it's lived in. And I'm just like, oh, so I can basically just, I can just take a leaf blower and a weed eater and just to the walls and just be fine. Just be fine. Uh, ER, do I have an opinion? Sure. I haven't, I haven't watched them all. I haven't watched them all, but yeah, no, I have, a, I have an opinion. How has the quarantine affected the Tigers? Um, they don't get as many visitors. They don't get as many visitors, and I think that um, I think that they get a little... So when they do get people, when they see new people, like people that they haven't seen in a while. Um, do I have an opinion on Grey Poupon? Melissa, but of course. <laughs> oh, Mary TRT. Hello from France. Hi. Hello from Texas. Which... Uh, from what I understand, uh, the people, I don't know if you know this, but people call Texas the France of America. Derek, where are my puppers? They're, they're back in Bridgeport. They're back in Bridgeport. I'm in my apartment right now. Excuse me. Ribs? Ribs? You know what? I have something special. I have something special for you. My old, my old pirate flint, flintlock. My old pirate flintlock. Okay, ribs. That's this one's for you. All right, you don't get the chucks. You get the flintlock. You understand? You understand? <laughs> Just watch yourself, ribs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why would people? No, nah, no, Texas, Mary. Texas is the France of America. That's just it is because it's the culture. Yeah, Morgan, I was. I was ready. I was ready for ribs. This can't end well. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I look away for two and then I see a musket. It's not a musket, okay? Musket's a long gun and everything. I mean, it's like a, it's a, it's a flintlock pistol. That's what it is. Turkey jerky, turkey jerky. <laughs> that starts, oh, someone saw that tweet. The Wisconsin man has gone full Texas. I know, I know. That's the thing. I am, I am like an amalgamation of both. Yeah, Sarah's back at care. Sarah's back at care. Sarah couldn't handle all of this, uh, this uh, quarantine energy. <laughs> Dirky jerky. That's right. Goodness, was that a gun? Uh, no, Denny. This is a check stream. What are you talking about? Okay, slow motion, slow motion, whoa, whoa, oh, boom, yeah, nailed that one, I would give that a solid uh, 12 out of 9, a solid 12 out of 9, Derek, forgot to take your meds again, what, in Ireland, Texas is the cork of America, Part of the country, but thinks it's its own republic. I'm part of the country, but thinks it's its own. I mean, no, the thing about that is like, no, Texas knows. Texas knows that it's a part of America, but Texas also has its own unique individual identity. And Texans know also the history of Texas because Texas history is a thing that's taught in Texas public schools. Um, so Texans know that Texas at one point was its own republic and they don't sit there and think that like, oh, they don't say like, you know, some people will say like, sure, the Republic of Texas still. But I think that people in Texas are just like, no, we're, we're American, but then we're also very much so Texan. We used to be a republic. Yeah. I know the Packers guy from the background. Great. Uh, er, we can I can get to that some other time. Are they are they all horrible? Is what are you talking? I don't know what that are. Is all who? Is all who? What are you talking about? I don't know what that question means. Yeehaw! There bear. Yep, there bear and dirty jerky. Yeah, the heat can be pretty pretty crazy, but it's only like that. You know, like three, four, six months out of the year. We? What are you talking about? We? Denny, do you, are you forgetting how to read again? Denny, 
is your reading comprehension is it getting is it getting kind of wonkered again? I know, America. Are people ER? That's a very that's a very broad question. ER, that's a very broad broad question. Texas, a Republican tell Mexico kept trying to take over. That is true. That is true. And then Texas is like, all right, well, uh, America, all right, we'll be part of you You guys. Just send some people down to help us. <laughs> That's pretty much what it was. Uh, actually, Whitney, Whitney Bakowitz, uh, does Dr. Bill still have Taurus T-Bone? Yes. Yes, he does. Taurus T-Bone um, is, a, uh, is a, it's called a field ornament. A field ornament. That's like saying Finland isn't always snowy, just 10 months out of the year. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Melissa. Exactly. Texas has... No, Texas hasn't claimed... I've claimed Texas. I don't think Texas has still... They're still undecided. They haven't necessarily claimed... They haven't said just like, oh, yeah. Oh, sure. That dare guy, come on over. They're just like, we'll allow it for now. <laughs> I know that is exciting. That's nice. It's nice that he has him. I want to see T Bone all grown up. I mean, he's just a you know big black cow, you know, just big black bull, bull cow, pretty much. So, what's everyone been up to? I love my glasses too. Thank you, Azer Blue. Any of the cats kind of give you the who the hell are you um, when you find them? No, actually, that, that's a good question, Ribs. But no, they don't. Um, like, I'll, like it's either the cats are just like, "Hey, what's up?" Like, "Ah, what? Yeah, yeah, what's up?" Or it's just kind of like, "Huh." <laughs> it's really it, that's that's like the. This mild acknowledgement or just like, hey, that's it. That's 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 basically the extent of the of the things. So what's your address for the census, that apartment or care? I guess for the census, mm, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Studying to get into university. Versena Ryu. Can it, can everyone give Versena some turtles. Can everyone give Versena? Because Versena is studying to get into university. And I think I think some turtles. I think giving turtles to Versena would be nice. Would be nice. It would be a nice gesture. I taught myself how to crochet. That's what I've been up to. Did you teach yourself or did you look up someone on YouTube and did that person teach you? Jello E Bean. Okay. Do you know how many Chuck? Do you know how many Chuck videos I've watched? Do you know how many Chuck? Instruction videos I've watched, zero, okay? That many, that many. And you've seen how good I am. You see how good I am. Oh, the notebook, Denny, ugh. That's Ryan Gosling, not a good actor. Sorry, it's just not. Getting through lots of rain. Is this for Patreons or is it general public? This is. Wait, what? This one? This live stream? It's just for general public. Yeah. Waiting for the panic buying. Blah, 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 blah. Turtles. Turtles! 12-hour trip from Tennessee down to Florida. Hi from India. Hi! Hi, Radika. Turtles! Oh, my gosh. Which big cat do you have the biggest urge to cuddle? Um, I don't really... Mm, I don't really have, I guess, a big one. Mika would be... I don't know. She she seems soft because she's chubby. Jan has to make some potato chuck koozies. Do you have a spirit spiritual connection to the cats in a way like a spirit animal thing? Is your no, no. Is your are you trying to say like are you trying to ask if it's just like if I'm like some you know plucky anime character and that's kind of like my my patronus, you know? Is this some sort of like teach me senpai kind of thing because? No, I just, those are my friends. The cats are just my friends. Legit taught myself. I knew, I know, Jellybean, I'm giving you, I'm giving you crap. 
Actually, Denny, I, I'm going to say like Ranga. I actually really like. <laughs> I actually really like uh, Ryan Gosling um, because he was in uh, Blade Runner, 2049, and then he was also uh, in um, the Neil Armstrong one. What was that one called? First Man. Neil Armstrong. And sometimes people say, you know, of course, like, okay, there's a difference between playing a stoic, which is what he played. He played a stoic in both of those movies. People are like, oh, it was bland and unemotional. And then you know what I say to those types of people? It's like, yeah, what? You know what? Maybe it's because you're dumb and then you don't understand how to pick up on subtle nuances. Okay? Because when I saw those characters, there was tremendous amounts of little subtle instances of emotionality that were being kind of projected in a relatively stoic, you know, facial demeanor. So, yeah. All right, I'm going to have to... I liked him in Dreis. Do you mean Drive? Or was there a movie called Dreis? Dreis. You count with your thumb first instead of your pointer? What, did I do that? Uh, tigers have a majestic feel to them. Azure blue. Okay. You you spend okay, tiger I understand the the, no, the notion that tigers have a majestic feel to them, but you spend a few years where you watch enough tigers like sit inside of a, a swimming trough or a swimming pool and then they pee in the pool. And then they try to like lick the water in the pool or you'll see tigers like having relations, intimate relations with stuffed animals or you see tigers just rolling around in just mud and just, yeah, just being just, just being just gross teenagers. And then a lot of the majesticness. <laughs> A lot of the majesticness is like, yep, just, that goes away. That kind of flies out the window. You know, I still love them. I still think they're beautiful. They're my friends and everything. But I don't see them as like, oh. It's like, it's basically like if you had like a, a if you like really admired a movie star, you know, or like some sort of like a musician. And then that movie star, that musician is like, Hey, can you come over here? I need to tell you something. And they like called you over, but they're like in the bathroom and then they're taking a dump. And they're like, hey, like, and they're just like kind of saying, like, I'm about to send this tweet. What do you think about this? And they're just like having just a regular conversation, but meanwhile, they're just like actively in the middle of taking a dump. So you might still respect their body of work, but some of the magic's gonna be <laughs> kind of affected. <laughs> That's kind of how I <laughs> Yeah, some of the, that's how I kind of look at it. I've seen what comes out of Yano. Not so majestic, but he is still holy. That is right. That is right. Tigers are as silly as house meals. They are, Denny. They are very much so. Never meet your heroes. That's right. <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Uncle Munch. That's right. Yes. Anything with real space history is awesome. That's right, Joe. That's right. I am guess it's hard to think that lions are majestic when they're just... That's right. That's right. The amount of times that Zubiri has literally pissed on me. And I've never had that. I've never had a lion or a tiger. Like, Kanapali got me a couple times. Kanapali got me really, really bad one time. Where I was uh, I was cleaning enclosures. And I was in between the two. Because it's where Ren and Solano are now. That's where, you know, Kanapali live. And I was faced away from Kanapali and I was pointing to someone and I was saying like, hey, but Kanapali was behind me. And he like sprayed me like and it hit the, hit the bottom part of the back of my head. And then it, it like immediately like dripped. So it like hit and I'm like, ah, and then like it, it like it just dripped down my shirt, like down the back of my shirt. I mean, just hot. Like, and that's the. Like it's vis like it was viscous. That's the other thing too. It's not like it's not like just liquid kind of running watery kind of thing. No, tiger spray, it's kind of got almost like a like a motor oil, you know, viscosity. So basically it, and it's warm and it <laughs> hits you and I'm like, ah! 
And then it dripped down the shirt. And my first thought was like, my God, how majestic is this? <laughs> how majestic. Oh, so majestic. It's like I'm watching. It's like I'm looking at a stunning vista. You know, a beautiful, a, a beautiful valley laden with spring flowers going up to, you know, a snow-capped mountainside, something like a Bob Ross painting. That's how majestic I felt that that was in that moment. Yeah, no, on the news they say Tiger P smells like, yeah, no, it's Tiger P does it does. Okay, but I'm going to say like tiger it like it smells like buttered popcorn, but buttered okay. But buttered popcorn um that was left in like a greasy porno theater for like 2 weeks. That's what tiger pee. So it's like technically yes, popcorn, but popcorn in that specific circumstance. I'm like there <laughs> How do you know a popcorn like that? She's like, never mind. Never mind how I know. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm imagining. That's what I'm imagining. That's what it's like. <laughs> but with Polly, it was art. Yes. All right. I was listening to the Foxy Bard. Is that some weird Dungeons and Dorks thing? Who, the foxy bard? I'm just gonna, just gonna loot for ya. Rar, oh, roll for persuasions. It's nerdy. It's dumb. As much as I love stale movie theater popcorn, this is off-putting. <laughs> yeah, right, Kathy D. That's probably some like Dungeons and Dragons thing. Like, oh, Kathy, I'm like I'm a paladin. <laughs> I have an enchanted I have some enchanted throwing I have I have a set of enchanted chucks <laughs> my name is Kathy <laughs> uh, Azer Blue what sort of Netflix series I'm not into any Netflix series right now I'm not watching Netflix I've been listening to K-pop as usual cool uh, nope I have not tried the Final Fantasy remake. I'm still playing Red Dead. I am still, I'm on my second playthrough of Red Dead right now, and I'm just going through uh, as Arthur, just enjoying myself, you know, just exploring and hunting and just talking to people and finding different things and completing challenges. I like it. It's very relaxing as far as doing stuff. Otherwise, I spend a lot of time on YouTube. I spend a lot of time on YouTube. Actually, actually, I. Uh, I do spend some time on like Disney, yeah, yeah, Rick and Morty, yeah, I know, it's a show, yeah, I watched all the Rick and Mortys, I love Rick and Morty and everything, I'm not obsessed with Rick and Morty, yeah. it's funny I say that, I'm not obsessed with Rick and Morty, but I have a Rick and Morty coaster, <laughs> right there, <laughs> I'm not one of those guys, <laughs> Lenny, Lenny, have you seen my friend Lenny, ciao, <laughs> uh, what's the best YouTube rabbit hole you went down? I don't know. That's a weird, that's a vague, that's a vague question. That's a vague, if you have a mask, can you show it to us? A mask? What are you talking about? I don't know. I don't have a mask. I think the BBs would like to take Jeremy. I think so too. Green eyed lady. Hi. Hello. Uh, but I am, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I mean, I've gone through different rabbit holes. Like, lately, I mean, I've gone through different rabbit holes where, um, it, but it's like, ch it changes over time. Sometimes I'll go down YouTube rabbit holes and, and, and I'll watch videos that are a little bit more kind of associated with, like, the things that I happen to be interested in at the moment. So, I've been watching, I've been watching different Red Dead videos, but, like, a lot of times just instructional kind of things. Like, oh, if you want to, like, be able to get some money from this place, or if you want to go and find this treasure over here, if you want to, you know, explore this house, there's this weird thing over here, and it's, like, stuff like that. So then the, the YouTube algorithm kind of picks up, and then basically it's like, do you want to see more of this? And I'm just like, of course I do. <laughs> yeah. 
I would love to see more of that. Mm hmm. Have I seen the Oblivion clips on the channel called Bacon? Uh, I'll have to check those out. Oh, yeah, that's right. Jan, need better cars than Gwent. I've also been playing Gwent. I've been playing the mobile version of Gwent on my phone. If you want it, if you have Gwent, download it. Send me a friend request, Big Cat Derek. We can play Gwent, maybe, maybe. Northern Realms, all the way. If you have a Nilfgaard deck, uh-uh. Oh, no, I will not play with you. Uh, I don't I don't do that. I don't do milk guard decks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Toss a horse, yep, on a rabbit. To the great. Oh yeah, mission where you hunt the legendary cougar in the cave. Oh, I got killed. I think I got killed a couple times trying to do that one. The Witcher was your last one, wasn't it? The Witcher was my last what? Probably the oh you're talking about series on Netflix? Yeah. Yeah, probably my last one. I will say, I will say, I watched something. I watched something. I, it's, it's, it, I watched something last night. I watched a classic, a classic. And when I say classic, I mean classic, like old school. Um, Disney animation that I had never seen before. I had never seen it. Yes. And the reason I watched it, because Heidi, Heidi actually came to visit. She came here. She was like, well, is there a sexy chucks, chucking guy over where you're at? And I'm just like, maybe. Who's asking? Oh, yeah, you like your Nilfgaard deck? <sighs> Ernest goes to camp. No, it was not. <laughs> oh my gosh, Lydia. You got some time. Okay, those. Yes. Yeah, there's cougars. I've, there's been times I have like in, in Red Dead where like a cougar would attack me. And I mean, I go ham. Just. <laughs> Just, I, yeah, I go nuts. <laughs> I'm like, get out of here, cougar. You don't take on Arthur. Because especially if that cougar, if that cougar frightens my horse, oh, oh, dead, dead. I'll skin it and then I'll throw a fire, fire bottle on it. I don't mess around. It's like, you're a computer cougar, not a real life one. Oh, murder you ten times. Um, but yeah, I watched a classic because Heidi came by to visit. Heidi came by to visit, and we were we were looking up some different stuff on. We were looking up different things on Disney Plus. We were like, I don't know, you know, I don't want to see anything Marvel, nothing Star Wars. So we started kind of going deeper, and then it started. It there was a there's a section on Disney Plus that said nostalgic, nostalgic movies. We we're like, oh, so we started going through, going through, going through, and then we got to one. It was an old. Old animation. And I'm like, you know what? I've never seen blank. And Heidi's like, really? I loved that when I was a kid. I love that movie. And I'm like, you want to watch it? And she's like, sure. So it was a nice little, nice little kind of, it was a nice little thing. It's a nice little thing. And I got to say, it made me really reevaluate my appreciation for classic, for classic uh, Disney movies. Because I kind of, I grew up in like, I was a young, I was a little kid like in the 90s, and that's kind of when a lot of things were becoming, that's like when culture was kind of flipping and shifting a lot. And don't get me wrong, I had a lot of appreciation for like older cartoons. I watched a lot of Flintstones, I watched a lot of Looney Tunes, and I did have the appreciation, but for some reason I just never, I don't know, like sometimes classic Disney, I just didn't like, yeah, it didn't have the right kind of like attitude, so I'm just like, ugh, I ain't gonna, yeah, I'm like totally radical, I'm like radical in everything with my like backwards kind of hat. You know, like I'm gonna try to do like some AC Slater skateboarding over at Bayside High because that's what's that's the '90s. That's what this is all about. <laughs> so yeah, and I watched it and I'm just like, this is amazing. This was really really good. This was really really good. I uh, no, I have not seen Charlie the Lonesome Cougar. So he's part of an illegal lunch at transportation ring. 
alternate universe where Derek shoots cougars over horses. That is right. In my yeah, in the Red Dead universe, uh, it's it, it's it's flipped. I'm like, you stay away from my horse. <laughs> I will shoot. I will shoot a thousand cougars to protect one horse. <laughs> <laughs> what movie was it? Oh my gosh. Uh you gotta guess. You gotta guess. Oh, the original Lion King, yeah, but that's like again, like I'm not talking about because I I grew up watching a lot of the 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 Disney, I guess you could call them the Disney Renaissance movies in the nineties. Which I love them. Yeah, sure. Basically, there's that ten year, there's like a ten or eleven year stretch, like starting starting from Little Mermaid all the way up to, um, I guess you could say Lilo and Stitch. It's like every one of those ones that came out during that time was like pretty much like just a knockout, like like solid gold winner, awesome. Um, that you know had a big effect on, on culture. Uh, not Snow White. Nope. Not Robin Hood. Not Herbie. Mick Sphinx. Mick Sphinx. Lady and the Tramp. I never saw it. I never saw it. Never saw it before. And I actually kind of was sitting there thinking like, all right, even when I said like, should we watch it? I was even thinking just like, ah, right, this is probably not going to be great. <laughs> it's probably not going to be that great and everything. But you know, like we're, I'm here and like me and Heidi, and we were having like a, just a nice kind of, you know, we're spending, we're just spending nice quality, um, like contented, relaxing, uh, just loving time. You know, just like being just like together because we've we've been so separate for so long, been so separate for so long. So it was nice because we, we were able to order out some food and, you know, I made sure that my apartment was nice and clean, stuff like that. You know, I was lighting candles and, and doing all sorts of stuff. I put on a I I, I put on a, a button up shirt, you know, so that we could have dinner in my apartment. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, hello. Oh, let's go on a date <laughs> over here, please. Over here, ma'am. Um, but, um, yeah, not Teenage Mutant, but, uh, I want, yeah, watched it, watched it, watched, and I'm just like, this is actually really good. This is actually a really good movie. Holy crap. Like, and I've, I've missed it. Like, what are the, what other classics? What other classics have I missed out on? Have I not? Because, like, I had, like, a weird... And a lot of times it's a weird bias that started when I was a kid. And it started because, like, again, it, it I, I was attracted to, like, that 90s kind of radicalness. And I'm just like, if it's not that, then I don't want it. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, just like, of course, you know, you Thundercats and, like, you Ninja Turtles... And yeah, you Ben Stimpy's, you know. Oh, it was so stupid. Was there spaghetti involved? No, no. We had steak. Hey, what's up, Sarah? I know, Abigail. Isn't it? Isn't it? It is. Joe Plains. Not necessarily well, technically not food delivery. It was we just we picked up. Cut out the food deliverer. They're opening. Well, that's the other thing too. They're, they're this is across Texas. This is like the first weekend that they've actually. They're trying to do like limited. They're trying to like open things back up uh, to a limited capacity. They're not like pulling like the the lever and saying just like everything's back open and everything's good. Just go about your lives as if nothing is going on. Not like that. But um, yeah, this is like the first weekend that they're kind of they're kind of slowly kind of you know re reintegrating. Gonna have to go, have to go Pokemon catch. All right, nerd. Whatever. Get yourself a Charmandizard. Charmandizardle. A Charmandizardle. Yeah. And for personal reasons, Ratatouille. Oh. Did you have a parasitic rodent? Did you grow up with a parasite rodent that like told you where to go, what to do, Kathy? That's adorable. <laughs> Illinois, hell, scare old Disney movie, Noctis, nineteen sixty four. I don't know what that. I've never heard of that. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. All right. Are there any other? Are there any other? 
Are there any other old school things? Uh, are there any other old school things? Like, should I? Are there any other old school things that I should check out? Growing up, everything was Little Mermaid theme. Rewatching it now, I don't quite get it. You don't think that? Oh, you don't like Little Mermaid? I actually didn't watch Little Mermaid like the first. The first time I ever watched Little Mermaid, I was about eighteen years old, and um, it was like my girlfriend at the time. It was her favorite movie. She's like, "We have to watch it," and I'm like, "All right." And I'm like, "That's fine." That's fine. I was, that was, isn't it weird? Like how you can be, I was so familiar. I was familiar with all the songs because they, they, they were just everywhere. The songs were everywhere. They were all around, all a part of the culture. They were everywhere, but I had never seen the movie. So it's like, okay, I knew every single one of the songs. And then I watched it. I'm like, oh, piecing it together. That's how this song is related to this. Yeah. Fox and the Hound. I've seen Fox and the Hound. I don't think I've seen Aristocrats or Aristocats. I like Brave a lot better than The Little Mermaid. Yeah, yeah, Brave's good. Brave's good. Fox and the Hound, yep. Yeah. Classic Disney is a little bit of a minefield. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly great, mildly traumatic. Oh my gosh, do you want to know what is a really heartwarming uh, movie? It's uh, Watership Down. Oh my gosh. I mean, watch it with the kids. It's great. Don't don't watch it with the kids. Yeah, don't don't watch that with the kids. Don't unless you want to pay for therapy. A lot of a lot of therapy. Don't. <laughs> a lot of people are like no 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 no. But it's a cartoon. <laughs> oh, that one's a rough one. Even if yeah, that one's. <laughs> That one, yeah, that one is like traumatizing if like you're an adult <laughs> to watch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, okay. What was not that one? There's an, there's another one from that same era where it was like hyper stylized, like hyper realistic kind of stylized animation, but it was about two dogs. That escaped from a, a, a testing facility. What was that one called? What was that one called? Someone's got to remember. Someone remembers that. It was about is an animated movie about two dogs, and then they talk to each other, and then they they were they had dog logic. Come on, someone, 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 someone. Not all new. No, not all dogs go to heaven. This one was like all dogs was like whimsical and like kind of like you know sad and everything. But it uh, not homeward bound. No, no, it's a different one. It's about like these stinking dogs. They escape from like a really like I and mean, the movie is effed up. It is really messed up. Um, like literally the first scene, it, the plague dogs. The plague dogs. Oh, that one is that one's that one's a brutal watch. That one is a brutal, brutal watch. Yeah, don't. Yeah, good one for the family. Good, good one for the family. The kids would love it. Literally, the first scene. Uh, literally the first scene of the plague dogs was uh, these two these two researchers these two scientists. They were like taking notes and watching one of the dogs like exhaust himself in a pool of water until he drowned. And then they fished him out and then they revived him and then they like were timing like how to revive him and like how to and it was just like what, what am I watching? I was uh I was I was in my twenties, I'm like, what, what, what the F is this? It's crazy. You watched Watership Down and Play Dogs back to back? What's the wrong with you? Okay, Jan, that explains a lot. That's why you are the way that you are. That's why it's like, everything's happy. I'm Jan. I have rabbit ears. <laughs> I'm trying to block away the darkness. That's Jan. She's just got these just terrible memories inside. Hmm. <laughs> uh. 
I know, traumatized just hearing about it. Oh my God, yeah, same director. It is, it's perfect. But I, I will say, I will say, Plague Dogs, it's it's a it's a really dark movie, but it's actually like it's like a good, it's art, artistic and it's good. I'm not gonna say that it's not a it's a bad movie because it's actually a good movie, but it's it's like it's heavy and it's like shit. Uh, and yeah, the dogs talking to each other and whatnot, and like it's so interesting because they're using like like human like verbiage and like language and the ability to communicate like that but they're using like a, like a weird like a dog sensibilities to try to make sense of why things are happening to them and it's like actually like it's really interesting like when you watch it Thomas the Tank quit bullying poor Jim oh whatever simp Whatever. Oh yeah, Jan already's got someone. Micah Laka Laka. Yeah, that's what. I, oh, Mike Laka, White Knight over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Barefoot Jen. That's right, Joe. Barefoot Jen. It's about the about the bombing, and it's like the the director of Barefoot Jen actually survived. Actually survived the Hiroshima bombing. So that scene, the scene of Barefoot Jen is much based off of like this the experiences that the director had yeah yeah so that's also that's a really messed up that's a really messed up uh scene yeah i dubs is doing i don't i don't know oh speaking of traumatizing I, I have the box set of scary stories to tell in the dark. This was a children's. This was a. This was a series of children's books. Children's books. I loved them. I was obsessed with these. I was obsessed with these. They're so good. See, there's three scary stories to tell in the dark. More scary stories to tell in the dark. Scary stories. To chill your bones. The books are good. Yeah. Yeah. The books are good because Alvin Schwartz actually took a lot of different ghost stories from American folklore. We don't, we're not going to read them. No. We're not going to read them. Um, so a lot of people, they look at the illustrations by Stephen Gamble, which are masterful. Masterful. We'll get a story time, Jan. We'll get a story time sometime. Maybe not right now. Maybe. I used to love these. Oh my gosh. So good. Like, look at, look at that. I love, and they're so like this, the stories, the story, the pictures were so surrealist and they had like this kind of inky kind of, and it was like, it was like, it would fade. So it was almost like this weird kind of charcoal, like shaded pencil effect that got them taken by like this kind of drippy kind of ink kind of thing. And it was, it was just dark and surreal and it, it felt really, ugh, just, it was creepy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's a wheelchair to Dinah. Dina? Is it Dina? Let's see. And has anyone seen, has anyone seen the movie that this was based off? I actually thought that the movie uh, I thought the movie was really good because uh, Guillermo del Toro, Guillermo del Toro actually did like a fantastic job of capturing the uh, the Stephen Gamble aesthetic. Dinah, mm. big toe, big toe. Look at that. This is a book for kids. Book for kids. It's a book for kids. <laughs> How is this? Ooh, ooh, the walk. Oh, look at it. It's just, it's so, it, it's such an evocative. It's, there's just such evocative imagery in there. Isn't that great? I remember that. <clears throat> what do you come for? Ooh, me tie dowdy walker. Oh. The head. That's great. That's great. 
the man there was an old woman of skin and bone he heard footsteps coming up the stairs oh the thing the art is prettier than I remember I know right it's so good it's so good yes the thing okay I'll read you the thing it's short it's like it's literally it's literally two pages the thing Ted Martin and Sam Miller were good friends they spent a lot of time together on this particular night they were sitting on a fence near the post office talking about one thing and another there was a field of turnips across the road suddenly they saw something crawl out of the field and stand up it looked like a man but in the dark it was hard to tell for sure and then it was gone but soon it appeared again it walked halfway across the road then it turned around and went back into the field then it came out a third time and started towards them by now ted and sam were scared and they started running but when they finally stopped they decided they were being foolish they weren't sure what had scared them so they decided to go back and get a better look pretty soon they saw it for it was coming to meet them it was wearing black pants a white shirt and black suspenders sam said i'm gonna try to touch it then we'll know if it's real he walked up to it and peered into its face it had bright penetrating eyes sunk deep into its head it looked like a skeleton Ted took one look and screamed, and again he and Sam ran. But this time the skeleton followed them. When they got to Ted's house, they stood in the doorway and watched it. It stayed out in the road for a while. Then it disappeared. A year later, Ted got sick and died. Towards the end, Sam sat up with him every night. The night Ted died, Sam said he looked just like the skeleton. Book for kids! Book for kids! Ha ha ha! Book for kids! <laughs> Book for kids! Book for kids! This is what this is what a kids book was in the eighties. Ah, <laughs> uh, if yeah, I know that's right, Abigail. If you saw that, if you saw that, like even I would just be just like, yeah, I want to see if that thing's real. I'd be like. That's a, that's a skeleton monster. We gotta get the f out of here. We need to get out of here. <laughs> and I wouldn't sit on the doorstep of my house. I would get in my house and I'd be like, I, I would be like, here, Sam, you take the chucks. I'm gonna take the flintlock. If that thing comes, we're gonna put a bunch of effing holes in it. <laughs> mm -hmm. White wolf. White Wolf. Ooh. The Haunted House. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. This one. This one, when I was a little kid, I had a hard time. Sometimes I had to skip. Sometimes I had to skip. Yeah. That one. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That. That's creepy. That is creepy. Kids book kids book this is a kids book oh, look at that right right i i would sometimes like i if i once i remember like i would flip through the book looking at the illustrations but sometimes i'd be like i'd have to like cover that i'd have to cover that one up because it was kind of it was kind of too much when i was when i was little it was kind of too much for me yeah <clears throat> Mm. Oh. I know the image in prints. Yeah. Yeah. Read us another? Okay, do you want me to read? Do you want me to read the one that's associated with this? With that one? It's a pretty good one. It's a pretty good one. <clears throat> All right, I'll read another one. 
I'll I'll read another one. Okay. One time, a preacher went to see if he could put a haunt to rest at a house in his settlement. The house had been haunted for about 10 years. Several people had tried to stay there all night, but they always would get scared out by the haunt. So this preacher took his Bible and went to the house, went on in, built himself a good fire and lit a lamp. He sat there reading the Bible. Then, just before midnight, he heard something start up in the cellar, walking back and forth, back and forth. Then it sounded like somebody was trying to scream and got choked off. Then there was a lot of thrashing around and struggling. And finally, everything got quiet. The old preacher took up his Bible again, but before he could start reading, he heard footsteps coming up the cellar stairs. He sat watching the door to the cellar and the footsteps kept coming closer and closer. He saw the doorknob turn, and when the door began to open, he jumped up and hollered, What do you want? The door shut back easy-like, and there wasn't a sound. The preacher was trembling, a little, but he finally opened the Bible and read a while. Then he got up and laid the book on the chair and went to mending the fire. Then the haunt started walking up again, and step, step step up the cellar stairs. The old preacher sat watching the door, saw the doorknob turn and the door open. It looked like a young woman. He backed up and said, Who are you? What do you want? That's what he saw. That's what he saw, children. The haunt sort of swayed like she didn't know what to do. And then she just faded out. The old preacher waited, waited. And when he didn't hear any more noises, he went over and shut the door. He was sweating and trembling all over, but he was a brave man and he thought he'd be able to see it through. So he turned his chair to where he could watch and he sat down and waited. It wasn't long before he heard the haunt start up again slowly, step, 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 closer and closer, step, step, and it was right at the door. The preacher stood up and held his Bible out before him. Then the knob slowly turned, and the door opened wide. This time the preacher spoke quiet like. He said, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Who are you? And what do you want? The haunt came right across the room, straight to him, and took hold of his coat. It was a young woman, about 20 years old. Her hair was torn and tangled, and the flesh was dropping off her face, so he could see the bones and part of her teeth. She had no eyeballs, but there was sort of a blue light way back in her eye sockets and she had no nose to her face. And then she started talking. It sounded like her voice was coming and going with the wind blowing it. She told how her lover had killed her for her money and buried her in the cellar. She said if the preacher would dig up her bones and bury her properly, she could rest. Then she told him to take the end joint of the little finger from her left hand and to lay it in the collection plate at the next church meeting. And he'd find out who had murdered her. And she said, If you come back here once more after that, you'll hear my voice at midnight, and I'll tell you where my money is in. And you can give it to the church. The haunt sobbed like she was tired. And she sunk down toward the floor and was gone. The preacher found her bones and buried them in the graveyard. The next Sunday, the preacher put the finger bone in the collection plate. And when a certain man happened to touch it, it stuck to his hand. 
The man jumped up and rubbed and scraped and tore at the bone, trying to get it off. And then he went to screaming like he was going crazy. Well, he confessed to the murder, and they took him on to jail. After the man was hung, the preacher went back to the house one midnight, and the haunt's voice told him to dig under the hearth rock. He did, and he found a big sack of money, and where the haunt had held onto his coat, the print of those bony fingers was burned right into the cloth. It never did come out. The end. Mm. What'd you think? Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark is the best collection of scary stories! Scary stories! It's great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know, what a lovely woman, right? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah. What a horrible name to give Grandma the Haunt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, please. If people could tell me, like, start start calling, <laughs> start referring to your grandma, not to, like, her, not to her directly, but start, like, to your other family members, like, to your mom, your, like, siblings, your cousins. Like, start calling her the Haunt. Like, yeah, the Haunt. <laughs> the Haunt wants to, wants to go to dinner. The who? Hey, Grandma. <laughs> she just wanted the yeah she just wanted the murder solved I know maybe I gotta turn the I gotta hold on let me turn the lights down a little bit let's get the here we go There you go. Maybe I can get that. Actually. And then I did this. We take this blanket, put it over like there. And then. Oh yeah, you know what? I could. I could get some candles. See, I got one of these, uh, one of these woodwick. They're woodwick. So it almost so you can actually hear the sound of the woodwick candle. Yeah, of course. Of course. All right. I know it's uh, it's crackly. It's kind of like a campfire because people are saying like, "Ooh, I need a we need like campfire sound." Here. I have two of them. I have two of them if I can reach. I know the crackling ones, they're great. It's hot. I'll hold this. I'll hold it between my Let's do this. We'll have one in the back, and one there. I know it's the best, right? It's great. I'm telling ghost stories. I won't set my shirt on fire. And if I did, it'd be alright. Hmm. Let's find another one.
They eat your eyes, they eat your nose. That's right. Look at this guy. He's kind of like this, the, for the first book, he's kind of like the mascot. Ah, the, the her son. I think it's like, don't she, yeah. Don't you ever laugh as the hearse goes by, for you may be the next two who die. They wrap you up in a big white sheet from your head down to your feet. They put you in a big black box and cover you up with dirt and rocks. All goes well for about a week. Then your coffin begins to leak. The worms crawl in, the worms crawl out. The worms play pinnacle in your snout, which is a card game. Pinnacle. 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 They eat your eyes, they eat your nose, they eat the jelly between your toes. A big green worm with roll... See, this is the thing. I, this is actually... And I was a kid and I didn't like this part. A big green worm with rolling eyes crawls in your stomach and out your eyes. They rhyme eyes with eyes. They rhyme eyes with eyes. Why would they do that? That's silly. Crawls in your stomach. It'd make more sense. A big green worm with rolling eyes crawls in your stomach and out your thighs. Hmm, what about that? What about that? Your stomach turns, your stomach turns a slimy green and pus pours out like whipping cream. You spread it on a slice of bread and that's what you eat when you are dead. <laughs> I know, lazy rhyming is right. But that last part, oh, that's gross. Oh, that's gross. I know, yummy, right? <laughs> Not kosher. <laughs> uh... Ooh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. <clears throat> this one's called... This one's called... The Girl Who Stood on a Grave. Some boys and girls were at a party one night. There was a graveyard down the street and they were talking about how scary it was. Don't ever stand on a grave after dark, one of the boys said. The person inside will grab you. He'll pull you under. That's not true, said one of the girls. It's just a superstition. I'll give you a dollar if you stand on a grave, said a boy. <laughs> a grave doesn't scare me, said the girl. I'll do it right now. The boy handed her his knife. Stick this knife in one of the graves, he said. Then we'll know you were there. The graveyard was filled with shadows and was as quiet as death. There's nothing to be scared of, the girl told herself. But she was scared anyway. She picked out a grave and stood on it. Then quickly she bent over and plunged the knife into the soil. And she started to leave, but she couldn't get away. Something was holding her back. She tried a second time to leave, but she couldn't move. She was filled with terror. Something has got me, she screamed, and she fell to the ground. When she didn't come back, the others went to look for her. They found her body sprawled across the grave. Without realizing it, she had plunged the knife through her skirt and had pinned it to the ground. It was only the knife that had held her, and she had died of fright. Kids book. Kids book. That's right. All right. Mm -hmm. Alligators. Room for one more. Mm. The Wendigo. 
Ooh, creepy. The book is just talking about knife safety. That is true. Yeah, she done got shook. She done got... She got spooked. She got spooked to death. Spooked. Let me see. May I carry your basket? No. Ooh, candles sound like rain in a microphone. Is that good? Because sometimes, like, microphones aren't supposed to get rain on them. The hook. White evening satin gown. High beams. Mmm. Some of these are creepy, 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 creepy. Ah. There's also some... There's a nice... This, the last section is actually uh, scary stories that are intended to make you laugh. Intended to make you laugh. Oh. I like this one. I always like this one. This is... The Slithery D. The Slithery... The Slithery D. He came out of the sea. He ate all the others, but he didn't eat me. The Slithery D. He came out of the sea. He ate all the others, but slurp. <laughs> ah, he got eaten. He got eaten by the Slithery D. <laughs> the Slithery D. <laughs> ah, eating all them people up on the beach. <laughs> the Slithery D. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We can look. We can read Big Toe. We can go back to some of the other ones. The slithery bee. All right. There's a couple more from this book. Hold on. Let's go back to some of the beginning. 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 Oh. Not the haunted house, not the haunted house, not the haunted house. Ah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cold as clay. Nope, 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 nope. We will find you. Where did it go? Where was it? Something about house, 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 house. There's one with the house. There's one with a house. I can't. Not the haunted house. We already went through that one. Yeah. There we go. Okay. This one's called. This one called. Stupid kid didn't know to leave when everyone was dying. It deserves. <laughs> he deserved it. All your friends be dying, and you're just basically just like, hmm. Just standing up there on the beach being like, whatever happened to Terry and Eddie? Hmm. Oh well. <laughs> Alright, this one's called... This one's called... The Guests. A young man and his wife were on a trip to visit his mother. Usually they arrived in time for supper. But they had gotten a late start and now it was getting dark so they decided to look for a place to stay overnight and go on in the morning. Just off the road, they saw a small house in the woods. Maybe they rent rooms, the wife said, so they stopped to ask. An elderly man and woman came to the door. They didn't rent rooms, they said, but they would be glad to have them stay overnight as their guests. They had plenty of room, and they would enjoy the company. The old woman made coffee and brought out some cake, and the four of them talked for a while. Then the young couple were taken to their room. They again explained that they wanted to pay for this, but the old man said he would not accept any money. The young couple got up early the next morning before their hosts had awakened. On a table near the front door, they left an envelope with some money in it for the, for the room. Then they went on to the next town. They stopped in a restaurant and had breakfast. When they told the owner where they had stayed, he was shocked. That can't be, he said. That house burned to the ground, and the man and the woman who lived in there died in the fire. The young couple could not believe it, so they went back to the house. Only now there was no house. All they found was a burnt-out shell. They stood staring at the ruins, trying to understand what had happened. 
Then the woman screamed. In the rubble was a badly burned table, like the one they had seen by the front door. And on that table was the envelope they had left that morning. Spoopy. Spoopy house. Don't do drugs, kids. I know, what a lovely bed and breakfast. It's nice that they didn't burn it down when the young couple was there. That they waited. Yeah. We're going to read this one. I'm going to read this one. One of my favorites. Love it. And it's called Me Tai Doughty Walker. Me Tai Doughty Walker. You ready? Okay. There was a haunted house where every night a bloody head fell down the chimney. At least that's what people said. So nobody would stay there overnight. Then a rich man offered $200 to whoever would do it. $200. And this boy said he would try if he could have his dog with him. So it was all settled. The very next night, the boy went to the house with his dog. To make it more cheerful, he started a fire in the fireplace. Then he sat in front of the fire and waited. And his dog waited with him. For a while, nothing happened. But a little after midnight, he heard someone singing softly and sadly off in the woods. The singing sounded something like this. Me tie doubt you walker. It's just somebody singing, the boy told himself. But he was frightened. Then his dog answered the song, softly and sadly. Linchy kinchy kali mali tingle tingle. The boy could not believe his ears. His dog had never uttered a word before. Then a few minutes later, he heard the singing again. Now it was closer and louder, but the words were the same. Me I doubt you, Walker. This time the boy tried to stop his dog from answering. He was afraid that whoever was singing would hear it and come after them. But his dog paid no attention. And again it sang, Linchy minchy kali mali dingo dingo. A half hour later the boy heard the singing again. Now it was in the backyard and the song was the same. Me tie doughty walker. Again, the boy tried to keep his dog quiet, but the dog sang out louder than ever. Linchy, kinchy, kali, mali, dingo, dingo. Soon, the boy heard the singing again. Now, it was coming down the chimney. Me, tie, doughty, walker. And the dog sang right back. Linchy, kinchy, kali, mali, dingo, dingo. Suddenly, a bloody head fell out of the chimney. It missed the fire and landed right next to the dog. The dog took one look and fell over, dead from fright. The head turned and stared at the boy. Slowly, it opened its mouth and... Ah! That's how you end it. That's how. <laughs> so much nope. <clears throat> Thank you.
I know, Marco Polo. Except the dog died. <laughs> oh. Stupid dead dog. Yep. A psychotic break. It happens, I know. I know. All right. All right. All right. Three more. <laughs> Only three more. But these are going to be a little bit. They're nicer. They're happier. They're a little. They make you. They make you. They might make you kind of giggle a little bit. And everything. Only three. And then we're done. And then I'm ending this. I'm ending this. But this next one's called the Viper. <clears throat> the Viper. A widow lived alone on the top floor of an apartment building. One morning, her telephone rang. Hello, she said. This is the Viper, a man said. I'm coming up. Someone is fooling around, she thought, and hung up. Click. A half hour later, the telephone rang again. It was the same man. It's the Viper, he said. I'll be up soon. The widow didn't know what to think, but she was getting frightened. Once more, the telephone rang. Again, it was the Viper. I'm coming up now, he said. She quickly called the police. They said they would be right over. When the doorbell rang, she sighed with relief. They are here, she thought. But when she opened the door, there stood a little old man with a bucket and a cloth. I am the viper, he said. I wish to wash and wipe the windows. <laughs> it's the viper. I am the viper. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! I am the viper. <laughs> I wish to wash and wipe the windows. <laughs> Love it. No, this is Patrick. <clears throat> Aaron Kelly's bones. Aaron Kelly was dead. They bought him a coffin and had a funeral and buried him. But that night, he got out of his coffin and he came home. His family was sitting around the fire when he walked in. He sat down next to his widow and he said, What's going on? You all act like somebody died. Who's dead? His widow said, y y You are. I don't feel dead, he said. I feel fine. You don't look fine, his widow said. You look dead. You'd better get back to the grave where you belong. What was that marriage like? <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> I'm not going back to the grave until I feel dead. He said, since, <laughs> since Aaron wouldn't go back, his widow couldn't collect his life insurance. Without that, she couldn't pay for the coffin, and the undertaker said he would take it back. Aaron didn't care. He just sat by the fire, rocking in a chair and warming his hands and feet. But his joints were dry and his back was stiff. And every time he moved, he creaked and he cracked. One night, the best fiddler in town came to court the widow. Since Aaron was dead, the fiddler wanted to marry her. Ah, the plot thickens. This Aaron was just being a big old C block. The V block, more like it. <laughs> oh, man. Aaron, you had your time. You had your time. You got to get back in that coffin. 
But it's kind of, it's like, I don't want to. I'm, a, I'm here. I'm here. I'm fine. <laughs> I know, a little soon. A little soon. She's waiting for this Aaron guy to get out of the picture. <clears throat> so, since Aaron was dead, the fiddler wanted to marry her. The two of them sat on one side of the fire, and Aaron sat on the other, creaking and cracking. <sighs> How long do we have to put up with this dead corpse? The widow asked. Something must be done, the fiddler said. This isn't very jolly, Aaron said. Let's dance! <laughs> the fiddler got out his fiddle and began to play. Aaron stretched himself, shook himself, got up, took a step or two, and began to dance. With his old bones rattling and his yellow teeth snapping and his bald head wagging and his arms flip-flopping, around and around he went. With his long legs clicking and his knee bones knocking, he skipped and pranced around the room. How that dead man danced! But pretty soon, a bone worked loose and fell to the floor. Look at that, said the fiddler. Play faster, said the widow. The fiddler played faster. <laughs> Crickety crack, down and back, the dead man went hopping and his dry bones kept popping. This way, that way, the pieces just kept dropping. Play, man, play, said the widow. The fiddler fiddled and dead Aaron danced. Then Aaron fell apart, collapsed into a pile of bones, all except his bald head bone. That grinned. At the fiddler, cracked its teeth, and just kept dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, groaned the fiddler. Play louder, cried the widow. Ho <laughs> ho, said the headbone. Ain't we having fun? <laughs> the fiddler couldn't stand it. Widow! He said, I'm going home, and he never came back. The family gathered up Aaron's bones and put them back in the coffin. They mixed them up so he couldn't fit them back together. <laughs> what a bunch of dicks. After that, Aaron stayed in his grave, but his widow never did get married again. Aaron had seen to that. Yeah, you know what, widow? Maybe wait a little bit. Maybe wait Maybe wait until your husband's corpse gets a little bit colder before you start going after some of that, their fiddler D. All right? <laughs> I don't know who's I don't know who's worse I don't know who's worse in this story they're all terrible people <laughs> they <laughs> they are all terrible awful people <laughs> oh oh that's great spooky scary spoopy too spoopy that yeah, Aaron Aaron Kelly's not, he's less spoopy and just more annoying. Just a, he's just kind of an annoying dick. <laughs> they, and that's of course why like the widow had been obviously dealing with that guy for years. <laughs> oh Jenny, oh ha -ha, Jenny, ah oh, looking to fiddle oh looking to fiddle around. <laughs> you guys, yeah. I know, quick on, but then again, it's like, I'm sure that the Widow was probably quick on the rebound because Aaron sounded like he was insufferable. <laughs> Aaron sounded like he was an insufferable man. <laughs> so the Widow was just like, I'm very glad that he is no longer here. <laughs> like I said, they're all, they're all just like pieces of garbage. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Last one. Last one. And then it's off to bed with yas. Off to bed with a lot of yas. This one's... This one's called The Ghost with the Bloody Fingers. The Ghost with the Bloody Fingers. There's some bloody fingers.
A businessman arrived at a hotel late one night and asked for a room. The room clerk told him the hotel was all filled up. There is only one empty room, he said, but we don't rent that one because it's haunted. I'll take it, said the businessman. I don't believe in ghosts. The man went up to the room, he unpacked his things, and he went to bed. As soon as he did, a ghost came out of the closet. Its fingers were bleeding, and it was moaning, Bloody fingers! Bloody fingers! When the man saw the ghost, he grabbed his things and ran. The next night, a woman arrived very late. Again, all the rooms were taken, except the haunted room. I'll sleep there, she said. I'm not afraid of ghosts. As soon as she got into bed, the ghost came out of its closet, the fingers still bleeding, still moaning, Bloody fingers! Bloody fingers! And the woman took one look and ran. A week later, another guest arrived very late. He also took the haunted room. After he unpacked, he got out his guitar and he began to play. Soon the ghost appeared. As before, its fingers were bleeding and it was moaning, Bloody fingers! Bloody fingers! But the man paid no attention. He just kept strumming his guitar. The ghost kept moaning, and its fingers kept bleeding. Finally, the guitar player looked up and said, Cool it, man. Get yourself a Band-Aid. The End. Bloody fingers. That is, I'm not even joking, that is that. Cool it, man, get yourself a band-aid. That's it, that was the last. (laughs) Jenny, (laughs) that's it, that's it. No more scary stories, no more scary stories. Because you guys will be staying up all night, and then then I gotta deal with it. And then Heidi will be like, did you read the Pride scary stories? Like, what? What? I'm trying to toughen them up. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, the dancing, the, the, the dancing dead guy one might be my favorite uh, out of that book, too. That's, that's a really good one. How about one last super scary one? Nope, sorry. Can't. Can't do it. Maybe we'll read some more scary stories at a different time. Maybe at a different live stream. That is actually fun. That was unexpected. I literally just had this book set just like sitting in my kind of like it's like a little stand where I just have other books and and like some some PlayStation games and stuff like that. So, yes. I like the thing. Yeah. No, the thing. I like that one too. The thing was good. That's a good... uh, That's a good... that's, That's like just a creepy... It's just creepy enough, and it's it's almost it's like an unknown kind of thing. So yeah, best gra- oh happy graduation, Abigail. Coyote lady, I'm sorry, you're gonna maybe have to go replay. But there, I'll look, I've got there's more books, there's more books, and I can do other things. I can do other scary story readings. Maybe that can also be a thing. Maybe I can have a separate channel where I just like read read. Just read. Do things like that. Like short stories. Where I can have fun. Munch and the little ones would like to hear these stories. No, they wouldn't. They're tigers. They don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> they just want me to just be there and just like say nice and just say fun words to them. You know, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe. Maybe you're right. We the scary stories. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Another one later at night for spooky factor. I think I think Melissa, you might have something, and then just like and just have the candles on. Oh, maybe not tonight. Maybe not tonight. Uh, books with Derek. <gasps> Scary stories with Derek. 
Mmm. I'd have to get so many. I'd have to get so many Woodwick candles. That would be fun. That'd be fun. Oh, spooky story. Like a, a separate spooky story channel. I'd like that. Yeah, that'd be fun. That would be kind of fun, actually. Anywho, I had a good time. I hope that you had a good time. Oh, yeah, Andreas is like, ah, it's, it's midnight over there. Even though it's like, it's kind of really bright here. Yeah. I know, Heidi does read to the movies. That's true. But I hope, I hope you had a good time. And, uh, yeah, that was great. I'll uh, move the candle. Auntie M, okay, just because you gave me an order to do it. I'm going to move it closer. Actually, I'm going to move both the candles next to the mic. Move the kit. Do it. Move the... Move them. Move. Do it. <laughs> I don't know. I'll be like, hey, Derek, can you... Could you please possibly move the candle? <laughs> move the candle. <laughs> closer. <laughs> Auntie M? Auntie M? All right. This one's for you. Candle Chuck! You get a candle Chuck! You get a candle Chuck, Auntie M. Make your, fin make your fingers bleed. Throw you in a closet. <laughs> Auntie M. Bloody fingers! I hate candles! <laughs> and the mic is on fire. Oh. All right. Cool. Get a, get, cool it. Get yourself a Band-Aid, Derek. That should, be, that should be one of the things. Whenever we tell someone that they need to calm down, that's it. Like, hey, man. Hey, cool it, man. Get yourself a Band-Aid. <laughs> I would I would not mind that. I would not mind that. All right. Anyway, thanks, guys. And uh, I will talk at you later. All right. Bye-bye.